Okay, so welcome back to episode 5 of the CBR 600R overhaul series. In the last video we did the rear braided brake lines, in this video we're going to tackle the front. So just a little update on the, uh, the rear lines uh, before we get started. Um, what I decided to do is actually utilise this clip here, so I've cut this off the old brake line and fastened underneath the hook here just to make sure the uh, the brake line is nice and secure. It was a little bit slack, um, to be honest, I think it probably would have been alright, but for the sake of 10 minutes to, to reuse the clip, I think that's well worth doing. Okay, so for the front lines, we're going to be using a few more tools than what we did for the rear. Um, I've decided I'm going to use the Gunson pressure bleeder. Um, and also a, a decent syringe to pull all the fluid out of the uh, the master cylinder So I'll put links to these products in the description below if you want to see just a traditional conventional way of bleeding your brakes Be sure to check out the rear uh, braided brake lines that I did uh, where I just used a traditional method for uh, Opening the bleed nipple and pumping the fluid out by hand uh, So for this install we're going to need an 8mm spanner for the bleed nipple uh, An 8mm bolt and some wrench and adapters You're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver um, a 12 and a 14 mil, and um, then I've got a length of pipe for the bleed nipple, new brake fluid, jug, rags, uh, the Gunson bleeder that I mentioned, the hell brake lines, um, and then I've got a silver line uh, syringe there. So let's get started pulling the brake fluid out of the system. So it's always a good idea to cover any painted or metal areas with some old rags or old towels. Brake fluid is very corrosive stuff. If you should get that on any paint work, it's going to make very short work of it. Okay. So the screw that we need to remove is just here on the inside and the easiest way to get this guy is going under the screen. Okay, so you've got your little clip in your screw here. This is going to give you access to unscrew the master cylinder. Okay, so you want to remove the plastic clip and very carefully you want to remove this little rubber diaphragm. Okay, so now we're going to go in and drain the fluid out of the master cylinder. So you can see completely dry in there now, no brake fluid. Uh, so the next task is going to be to start pulling off the old brake lines. So in terms of fasteners, you've got an 8mm bolt here. There's one on the other side and then just on the underside of the bike. Uh, it's a little bad to see. It's tucked up here in front of the horn. Get the camera there so you can see. I can't quite make it out but it's just... Just at the top there, follow the brake lines up, you'll see where they meet. Just at the top there, there's an 8mm bolt holding that in place as well. I'm not going to put a camera up there, so I'm going to whip these bolts off um, and then we'll pull the lines up. Okay, so we have the brake lines loose, uh, so the next job is going to be disconnect the brake lines. I'm going to start on the left hand side of the bike and I'm going to take off the 12mm uh, the here. Uh, stick the brake line straight into the jug and then I'm going to move across to the other side. Okay, and the final job in removing the old brake lines is going to be disconnect the bolt underneath the bottom of the master cylinder here. Um, so just to make my life a little bit easier, I've just removed the ignition, ignition switch. Um, so it's just two bolts holding that in place. Again, remember some towels underneath. Um, <clears throat> so gravity is not on your side at this part. So the brake fluid is going to come straight out now, so I've already got the repairings removed on the CBR. There's a good chance you probably won't have it if you're doing this job. And any oil spill, any brake fluid spills here are going to be very visible, so just do take care. That's it, so that is the front brake lines free from the bike. We can pull all of this out and begin installing the new brake lines. 
Yeah, so with the new lines, um, there's no instructions as such. But common sense prevails a little bit, so we have two stretches of line. One's a little bit bigger than the other, um, so that's going to be for the left-hand side of the bike. Um, and then obviously the fastens on the top here are what's going to connect onto the master cylinder. So we'll start by putting a dry build in. Okay, so assembling the front brake line is a little bit different to the back, so we have a, a double uh, a double banjo bolt. Um, so what I'm going to do, obviously it fastens to the master cylinder underneath. So we're going to do washer. Right hand, sorry, left hand brake line, washer. Right hand brake line, washer, and then this whole assembly is going to fit into the bottom of the master cylinder. Okay, I'm just going to get everything in, just hand tight for now. So we do the dry fit just to make sure everything's fitting as it should. Okay, let's get down to the caliper side. Okay, so we're doing the right caliper side first. Just do a little roll in here just to make sure no brake fluid came out while I was looking at the lines. Okay, so I want the lines to come away from the caliper. So we're gonna do same as before, washer, brake line, washer. I'm gonna go straight into the caliper. So obviously there's a lot of slack here in the line at the minute. Um, I think what I may do is what I did at the back and actually pull the clips off the old brake line, so I can fasten the fasten the uh, the new line back onto the the bumper as the uh, as the original line was. For the left hand side of the bike, for whatever reason, the uh, the bolt here seems to make sense. It fits on this way now. I'd rather have this little curve actually facing away from the bike, um, but rather than twisting the line, it doesn't make a lot of sense to do it like that. So. I'm just going to go ahead and mount it like this. So as I mentioned before, um, I'm only going hand tight with the bolts here. And then I'm going to go through and I'm just going to nip them up tight by hand. I'm not using any specified torque settings. As I mentioned, it seems to be different from what uh, the hell's saying to what the factory, man uh, the factory manual for the Honda's saying. So I'm just going to go by feel. If you want to go ahead and torque them up to the specifications, by all means, be my guest. But this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to torque everything up, make sure I'm happy with it all and then we're ready to start adding some brake fluid. Okay, so I didn't actually realise at the time of getting ready to film the video that the Gunston Easy Bleed doesn't actually have the right adapters to fit on top of the master cylinder. So this is the biggest one that comes in the kit. Um, and as you can see, obviously that's never gonna fit onto there. So it's a bit of a pity because I was really wanting to use that to show you guys. Um, so I'm just gonna do a conventional bleed instead. Um, but basically how the Gunston system works is, let me grab the stuff here so you get, bottle here that you're going to fill with your brake fluid this side will go onto your master cylinder um, this side onto the top of the bottle and then you get this one here actually connect onto uh, the tyre on your bike or your car um, and then the idea being the pressure from your tyre is going to go through the system here pressurise the brake fluid that's already in here so as soon as you open up your bleed nipple um, it's going to push the brake fluid around um, and out of the bleed nipple without the need to pump the brakes. So it's a continuous, you just open the bleed nipple, wait for all the fluid to come out until you don't see any bubbles, close the nipple, do the other side, and that's a bleed complete with your fluid. Uh, we are master cylinder, will be full of fluid as well. So yeah, it's a pity I can't show you that, but we'll just do a traditional brake bleed instead. So it's a pity I couldn't show you the easy bleed. Um, I've used it a few times, especially on cars. It's a really decent bit of kit to have. It's not expensive, I definitely recommend one. Um, if you're interested, I'll put a link in the description below. It's about £20, I think it was. It's well worth it. If you do a lot of work on cars and bikes, it's well worth having. Um, it's just a pity it doesn't fit this specific bike. So if you saw the rear brake line video, manual bleed is very easy to do. It's a little time consuming. So we're going to top the, uh, the master cylinder off with fresh brake fluid. There's a fresh bottle from when I did the rear braided brake line. Because um, it's been a few days now. So fresh bottle of brake fluid, start with a caliper that's further away from, furthest away from the master cylinder. So in the case of this bike, it's on the left hand side. So we're going to top up the master cylinder, bleed the brake out, uh, which basically consists of hit the brake, open the bleed nipple, close the bleed nipple, off the brake, and you want to repeat that. So you don't see any bubbles come out of the, uh, the pipe just here. Uh, so I'll throw a time lapse up while I get this done. OK, 
Okay guys, there we go. That's it. Install is complete. Um, so what I decided to do, I reused one of the brackets for the top of the mug guard here. So this was actually the bracket that was way up there, if you remember. So it looks a little bit ugly, but it serves purpose. It's going to keep the wire, uh, the kit brake line where I need it to be. On the other side, I just simply reinstalled the clip that was already here. Um, I just turned it around the other way. And as when it was facing inside here, I was scared it was going to catch inside the top of the fork. So there we go. I may do something else with these in time, but there we go. They do, do the job for now. So we bled the other side, we bled this side, and then there is right up at the top here um, another little bleed valve just off from the master cylinder. So you want to do that one last. Uh, once you're done, check the level in your master cylinder, make sure it's correct, um, and also reinstall the safety clip along with the diaphragm before you do uh, anything else. Yeah, and that's it. Install complete. So you want to check your brake lever, you should have a really nice tight brake lever and I can't pull it much further back than that, so that's, that's perfect. What I would then suggest, just to check for any small leaks you might not notice, I always put a little bit of blue roll just down under the bike and when I come back to it the next day obviously you can clearly see if there's been any leaks or anything like that. Okay, so that's it for this video, thanks very much for watching, hopefully it helped you out. Um, stay tuned, in the next video I'm either going to be doing the cool and flush or I may make a start with the... Uh, the LEDs on the back of the bike or even the uh, the integrated turn signals will we'll see how we go. Uh, but till then, stick around, stay safe and I'll uh, I'll see you all in the next one.